for joining us on this New Year's Day. Well, let's remind you of the stories we're keeping a close eye on that have followed us from 2015 to date. The volatile situation in Burundi has dominated headlines. The government there has accused civil society organizations and opposition parties of trying to destabilize the country. Now, this comes after uprisings against President Pierre Nkurunziza's third term in office. The youth in that country have also voiced their discontent with the situation. We're now joined by Rafael Mbonimpa. Uh, he is uh, from uh, Burundi, but now is in South Africa. He was studying, studying uh, criminology and international relations uh, with uh, Monash and was one of the student uh, representatives there from Monash University. So, Raphael, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Morning. It's a pleasure. To be here. What do you make of the situation back home? Um, look, the situation uh, is worrying all of us as, as citizens of Burundi and, and especially as people who have families there. And um, uh, the, the, from the, the beginning in, in uh, April 2015 uh, to, to where how the situation has developed, uh, we see that it is degenerating and, and uh, there have been fears of uh, a civil war. Mm. Now it's no longer a uh, fear. Uh, there's civil war uh, uh, almost happening because there have been rebel movement mm. attacking. Uh, the government have been committing uh, mass atrocities. They've been uh, killing people in numbers in the capital city. So uh, also the ethnic dimension that had been excluded from, yeah. from the beginning is now surfacing and, and people are saying that the conflict is developing along uh, the, the, the lines ethnic of lines. Hutu, yes, yes, Hutus and Tutsis. So it's a very worrying situation right now. Mm. Let's speak a little bit more about that situation. Has it always been prevalent? Was there uh, some sim simmering tensions in Burundi's between Hutus and, and Tutsis that, that, that have now surfaced and, and are bubbling over because of this uh, uh, instability? Um, look, Burundi is a country with um, a long-standing uh, history of instability and violence. And, and um, although after the 2000 peace uh, uh, agreement that was signed in Arusha, uh, through the mediation of, of Mandela. Uh, there was hope and uh, after the first uh, elections in 2005, a lot of Burundians thought that uh, the, the, the history of Hutus and Tutsi w was now behind them. But since 2010 elections, uh, although there haven't been much coverage about what was happening in Burundi, mm. there have been a lot of human rights abuse, uh, there have been a lot of uh, exactions committed by government and the, the, the youth militia uh, in Bonerakure. Uh, so what we are seeing now is only a result of a, a build-up that has been happening for, for quite some time. Mm. Let's talk a little bit uh, about the role of young people. You just touched on the youth militia, but we also do know that there are some youngsters who are actively fighting against the lack of democracy there, as perceived by some who are on social media platforms and other uh, um, uh, platforms as well, voicing out their grievances and their concerns. Speak to us about the, the dichotomy there for young people. Uh, the, the majority uh, of uh, Burundian population like many other African countries, is comprised of young people. And, and the, these are young people who are not uh, educated largely and who have no employment. So it's very easy to use them in this type of situations. Mm -hmm. And that's what exactly uh, Murunziza have capitalized on. Because uh, uh, what is happening, the, the, the youth militia called the Imbonerakure, they are young people who are in the country who have no hopes of finding any job of mm -hmm. securing their future. So if you offer them a, 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 an opportunity, for example, like what he's doing, because he's telling them, look, you can start collecting money in the road, stopping cars, collecting money mm -hmm. like tax uh, collectors. Mm -hmm. And if you're a young person who have no means of feeding your, yourself or your family, you will not uh, uh, refuse such an opportunity. And that is what happening. It's very unfortunate because the president, instead of uh, <coughs> using the time that he spent in office, 10 years, which was enough, mm. to, to find appropriate programs to, to help this, this youth, he's, he's uh, uh, rather decided to use them uh, against the nation, against their own, uh, their own people, which is very unfortunate. Mm, we see uh. the, the, the development of a war economy there where there's lawlessness. But uh, what are some of the other concerns of perhaps friends of yours and family members who remain in Burundi? Because I know there's a mass exodus and a lot of people are, are starting to leave in droves. But for those who remain, what are, what are some of their concerns? Perhaps food shortages, water, uh, or, or is it normality? you know, in, in considering the, the, the situation? Uh, it's, it's so sad to say that uh, Burundians have been 
uh, in this situation that they're almost uh, used to it. Oh. But, you know, you can never get used to such things yeah. because right now, especially with the, the mass killing that are going on uh, in the capital city, mm. uh, the, the country is being, uh, the country's life is being shattered. And, and there, there's been sh uh, food shortages. People who supply the capital city from uh, uh, the provinces are not, not able to do that because of the security situation. And that affects people who are in, in capital city. Mm -hmm. But before they even worry about food, right now the main worry is the worry of surviving. Spending five minutes in Burundi right now is, is, is a miracle. So uh, I, 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 I've lost five, more than five close friends that mm. I knew, uh, that we grew up together as, as children since this uprising started in, in April. And so many youth have been rounded up uh, just recently on 11th and 12th over a hundred people were killed and thrown in mass graves just like mm. that. So it's, it's a lot of concern that uh, goes beyond food security because even their own life is not guaranteed right now. Mm. Yeah. We do know that there have been um, stakeholder engagements between civil society groups, churches, opposition party leaders that have been facilitated by uh, some uh, states in that particular region, uh, but that President Pierre Nkurunziza has not availed himself to attend such. What is the future? Where to now? Well, that's exactly what has happened. And, and the thing is, Munuziza is not ready to, 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 to attend the, the, the negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, even recently in, Camp in Entebbe, Uganda, uh, because Yoel Museveni had been nominated as the, 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 the regional, by the region mm -hmm. to, to, to mediate the current uh, crisis. But uh, although the president sent a delegation to that particular, uh, 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 med um, that particular talks in Entebbe, they have made it clear that they are not going to attend any uh, future talk if the opposition is, is, is there. Mm -hmm. So he, he, from the beginning, everyone has tried to reach out to this man, but he's not shown any, any, any sign, any willingness to attend the talks, which means Muruziza have a clear plan of exterminating his own people, of bringing back the demons of, of, of uh, uh, tribalism and, and ethnicity which led to, to the genocide in our neighboring country in Rwanda in 94. And, and he wants to execute that plan at all costs. I mean, recently the AU have decided, have, have uh, suggested to send troops there to, to disarm the, the, the people who have weapons illegally and, and try to, to, to stop the mass killing that are going on. Mm. But Muruziza have now threatened that if any foreign uh, 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 peace mission try mm. to enter Burundi, he will consider it as an invasion and, and he will fight them uh, to the last teeth. So mm. he, he's definitely determined to, to carry on his plan, which is mm. to kill the people. And, and I think something needs to be done to stop him because mm. he's not willing to negotiate. We're fast running out of time and we simply can't exhaust this uh, conversation in about five, six minutes. But I must ask you, there's been a lot of talk about the international community and how they've responded to this and how uh, there's a lack of coverage and a lack of support. Mm -hmm. But I want to bring it back to the continent, the African Union. Mm -hmm. Do you think Pierre Nkurunziza's peers uh, have the political will, uh, the muscle, the teeth to actually hold him to account and to bring the much needed ch change and relief uh, in Burundi, uh, especially considering that uh, some of them themselves themselves are flawed in seeking a third term. Mm. That, that's, that's a very uh, uh, tricky uh, question because mm. as you, you mentioned it, a lot of leaders uh, who are, uh, whose country are members of the African Union themselves mm. uh, have this history of, of not wanting to, to leave power and, and uh, that then makes it difficult for some of them to, mm. to, to advise or to talk to Muroz either to, to tell him to, to yeah. step out. But uh, we have to, 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 to recognize the effort of, of uh, AU for the first time that had taken this case very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, because if this intervention was to happen, the, the 5,000 troops that the AU had said that was going to mm -hmm. send to Burundi, if yeah. this was to happen, it would be the first of its kind uh, to, to intervene in a nation mm -hmm. uh, when the leader had refused it. So w yeah. we are hoping the AU can do something. And, and, and mm -hmm. 
definitely they, 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 they can. There is a capability they can do it. Well, so anything but a happy new year in Burundi today. Uh, a lot of people fighting for the survival there and just uh, hoping for change. Uh, Raphael, thank you so much uh, for your input. Uh, Raphael Mbonimba joining us. A young man from Burundi studying here in South Africa. Just uh, completed his qualification in criminology and international relations, giving us his perspective. Raphael, thank you so much uh, for that insight. And as we celebrate New Year's here in South Africa, spare a thought for our brothers and sisters in Burundi. From us, it's goodbye. God bless.